Okay, uh, maybe I am going to start. So, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, subject. Uh, LGT2106 or LGT2BO2. Uh, this is a combined subject. Combining uh, the normal uh, BBA core subjects uh, together with uh, car subjects. These are car B subjects. So for some of you, you take this as a car subject. But uh, we will have the same lectures, same assessment with all the others. So it doesn't matter. So you just uh, assuming this is a normal, normal subjects that uh, you take. Okay, so this is uh, principles of operations management. Basically, uh, this subject uh, is a uh, foundations of uh, business core, so that uh, we cover the basic ideas about how to manage the business operations. When we say business operations, we are not talking about always uh, producing products. Doesn't matter. Any, uh, any kinds of operations that uh, you need to handle in your real life or in your business career, you still need to think about how to, how to do it, how to manage in order to make it more effective and efficient. So this is the focus of this uh, subject. So uh, before I start, make sure you register to, to this subject. If you go to the warm room, you are free to leave. Okay? So uh, for this subject uh, in the semester, I will cover some uh, basic but important concepts about how we can manage different aspects of operations. So after these uh, subjects, after taking these subjects, I hope uh, you, you will know how to at least think about how we should operate a business, a basic business. Doesn't matter how, how big is the scale, a small one, even your own personal operations, you, you can use or you can apply what you have learned here to your daily life. Okay, so this is the focus of uh, operations management. And let me introduce myself. I'm Anthony Pang, uh, the lecturer of this subject. And at the same time, I will handle all the tutorial classes by myself. Okay, so you will see me twice a week. Uh, my office located at M625 Lee Housing Tower. Phone number, email. Okay, you can send me email, you can call me, or you can come to me if in case you have any questions about the subject. Uh, here are the list of the tutorial sections that are available to this subject. So uh, you are free to register any of these sessions, but once you register to a particular section, please stick with that section. Go to the sections every week. Okay? So you, you, you cannot, uh, this week you go to a 9.30 section, next week you go to 10.30. It's not allowed, unless you have my approval before you go there. Okay? So please uh, understand this, because it's very difficult. I need to prepare materials for you. I don't know who will come, then it's very difficult for me. Okay, so uh, in the first maybe eight to nine weeks, we will use computer because nowadays IT is very important. I will teach you some basic skills how to use computer software to do some operations planning. Okay, so that's why we will use MN102A. So this is located uh, in the local square. So you know how to go there, okay? In terms of the subjects, uh, administrations, here you can see we have the 50% coursework and 50% final exam, which is almost the same as many other subjects. Okay, but uh, please pay attention to this. This is uh, special, especially for someone who are not from the faculty of business, okay? This is important to you. You need to pass both components, continuous assessment and the final exam. 
then you can pass the subjects. That means if you fail either one, you will not get a pass grade, no matter how good you do in the other component. Okay, please pay attention to this. And for the coursework, 50%. It includes case study report, which will be due in week 10, week 10, November 10th. Okay, I will make an announcement. Uh, you need to write a, an essay, not that long, okay? I will talk about this later. And then there will be two quizzes in week 4 and week 12. So these two quizzes contribute 5% each. Very simple, 30 minutes and one question only. So for each quiz. And then in week 8 or week 9, we will have a midterm exam which will last for one and a half hour. Okay? And depends on the progress of the lectures. We will see whether we schedule on week eight or week nine. So if you have any any other commitments, please let me know in advance if you want me to accommodate your needs. Okay? So otherwise I will see how it works, whether we do it in week eight or week nine. And then the last 5% is the cost participation. But you can see it's only for tutorial, which means I'm not going to take attendance in lectures, no attendance. So it's up to you whether you want to come or not. Okay, so, but I will mark your attendance during the tutorial sections. Why? Because in this list, you cannot see any assignment or exercise, right? But still, in the tutorial classes, we do exercise, we do assignments together. But in that case, I'm not going to mark or grade your assignments. Just want to make sure you work on this. And at the end of the sections, tutorial sections, I will cover the solutions so that you know how to do it. But in order to make sure you learn, so this is why you need to come, okay? So this is how I make the class participation in tutorial. You need to come for every tutorial section, such that you get this 5%. And in how to get this 5%? Okay. So you, you know we have a one hour sections. So this is the clock. Okay, I will divide the one hour sections into four time slots. Okay, it means if you arrive within the first 10 minutes, you will get 100% of the cost participation for that session. I will mark A here. Okay? If you come between 10 to 20 percent, uh, 10 to 20 minutes, that means you're late for 10 minutes, but not longer than 20 minutes, you will get 80%. This is B. Okay? And so on. This is C. That means if you late for more than 20 minutes, it's 60%. What about this? Okay? You don't need to come. So if you're late for more than half an hour, you don't need to come because you will not get any class participation for that session. Okay? So this is uh, how I will mark your attendance uh, in the tutorial sections. Is that okay for you? Fair enough, okay? So, as I said, I'm not going to mark your exercise, but I, I try to make sure you work on the exercise and know how to do it. So I will walk around and see whether you need help. So don't hesitate. If in case you don't know how to do it, just let me know. I will walk around always. Okay? And for the quizzes, midterm, 
We will do it in class. That means during the lecture time. Quizzes normally from 4.45 to 5.15, the last half hour. Okay? And then the midterm takes one and a half hours. That means the whole lectures. So if in case, if in case you cannot attend any of these quizzes or midterm, you have to let me know in advance by email or whatever. Okay? You may provide the proof afterward. For example, you feel sick that day. You cannot come. You need to send me email before the time of the quiz or the midterm. If after, sorry, no makeup. Okay? So you have to do it before the start time of the quiz or midterm. So that I can give you other arrangement. Okay? Otherwise, you will get zero marks for that. Clear enough? Okay? So that's the requirement. Uh, for these uh, subjects, uh, operations management, as I said, it is a foundations business core subjects. So that's why there are so many textbooks available. You are not forced to buy any of the textbooks. It's up to you. Uh, because uh, some textbooks can be very expensive. If you don't want to buy, it doesn't matter. Because this is a foundation subject. You can go to the library, you search operations management, you can find at least 1,000 books that are relevant to the topics. So then you can take reference from there. Okay? So these are only the suggested readings for you. So it's up to you whether you want to buy or you go to the libraries to find it. Okay? If anything that uh, you don't understand, please stop me. Okay? Because I, I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about. Okay, here are the topics that I will cover for this uh, subject. You can see, not many. Eight in total. And first one is the, only the introductions, that means today. And then later we will talk about different uh, topics, which are very common in operations management. So for this, I will cover one by one later how these topics are related with each other. Let's talk about this. Case study report. I will put these cases onto the backboard so that you can access to the case file. You just case, uh, click the case ABCDEF. You will see the document after today, not now, okay, after today. And you read this case, you pick one by yourself. And then at the end of each case document, you will see some questions at the end. What you need to do is to base on those questions, you provide the answers. But the key point here is, you need to write an essay instead of Question one, answer one, question two, answer two. Okay? You need to write an essay which include an introduction, the body paragraphs, conclusion, something like that. Okay? That covers the answers of those questions. And you can see the assessment criteria of this case study is quite special, I can say. Content, 60% only. 40% will be the use of English. This 40% include 40% in terms of how you organize this essay, the structures of the essay, and 10% on the grammar. Why? Why we have such criteria? Actually, it's because for these subjects, by the nature, is more quantitative. That means a lot of mathematics. But at the same time, for the faculty of business students, we emphasize communication skills, language competencies. So this is why 
we developed this case study requirement for all of you in order to have your own individual writing. And you can see the requirement is around 1,200 to 1,500 works. Not that long, okay? And in week 10, you need to submit this. So as I said, week 10 is 10th of November. You need to submit your essay to the Bible system. Okay? So this is what you need to do. And again, if you are new to PolyU, I need to let you know that we take it very serious for the plagiarism issues. Don't try to copy each other's work. And we use software to detect. So that means it's very easy to find similarities with the database. So you need to submit the Turnitin report for this assignment. The requirement is very generous, I can say. I only consider the similarities with more than 20% with one single source of document. So this is very generous uh, uh, requirement. It means with uh, 1,500 works, you have 300 works or more is the, are, are the same as another single document. How you can tell this is not a copy, right? So I hope you bear in mind, this is the requirement. And if in case any plagiarism uh, problems detected, maybe some disciplinary actions will be taken. So it can affect your study here. Don't try to do it. Try to work on the assignments by yourself. And for this assignment, actually, the ELC's department, the language department, have already developed some guidelines for you to work on this assignment. I will post those guidelines to you. And sometimes later, the colleagues from the ELC department will give you some briefing about how to use those guidelines. So please keep this in mind. Try to refer to the guideline in order to make a better essay. Okay, so before we start the content, some cast regulations. I hope uh, you follow. First, try to arrive on time. I know it's uh, very far away from the main campus, you said core. But uh, we start at 3.30, not at the early morning, right? So it should be possible for you to arrive on time. Second, don't use your mobile phones to play games or other apps. I hope you use your mobile phone if in case you don't want to print out the lecture notes, then you can use the mobile phones to do it. Same for your laptop. I know many of you are already using laptops. Okay? So I hope you use the laptop only for the class related purpose. So that means for today, I can guarantee you are not using the laptop for the class purpose because no lecture notes at the moment, right? What you are looking at. Okay, so can you follow this? Okay, not difficult, right? So I always have, uh, have uh, procedures to handle your mobile phones. So uh, for many years, it works quite well. So for the first time when your mobile phone rings, I will take your mobile phone. Okay, first time. I will take your mobile phone and then return to you at the end of the lectures. Okay? But uh, if your mobile phone rings again, second time within the semester, you again, then I will return only the SIM card and memory card to you. Okay? And the mobile phones, I will sell it in the second hand market. But don't worry. I'm not going to take any money from that. You or the other classmates will share those money. Okay? Because you disturb your classmates, 
this is a compensation to them. Fair enough. First time, no problem. Second time, you have trouble. Okay? Make sure you buy the most latest mobile phone if it rains. Okay? So, agree? Agree with that? Yes. Okay, if yes, then we adopt this policies. Don't make it work, uh, don't make it rain. Okay, so now we go back to this. Okay, these are the topics that I'm going to cover in this uh, subject. Operations management. Do you have any idea? Is there any students who have studied similar subjects before? Maybe yes, I believe. Because some senior year students here. Right? You have studied some, right? Some topics like this. Okay, so the basic concept about this is how to manage the operations from the input to the transformations and the outputs. So this is what we mean by operations management. Why we need to manage all this? If we cannot manage the good inputs, even though you have the good systems to handle, at the end, you cannot give good outputs. Same if you have the good input, but you don't have the good systems. Then at the end, your outputs will not be good. So this is why we need to manage everything. So we will see what kind of transformations that we do when we say managing the operations. So for this, I will cover it in today's lectures, introductions, I will talk about transformations and different dimensions that we care when we manage our systems. And then, next lectures, we will talk about supply chain management. Because many of you belong to the Google Supply Chain Management Program. So, your parents, your friends may ask you what you are studying. Right? Always. And very difficult to answer. Right? So, I will talk about what does it mean by supply chain management and what are the, the trend or the developments of supply chain management because this term is quite new, similar to logistics, it's quite new. In the old days, we don't have supply chain, we don't have logistics. What we have, what we use, to, what, what are those terms that we use? Chain? Trade. Trade. Trade is more on the uh, uh, business uh, relations, or uh, how to say, is to, to deal with uh, contracts, mainly. Supply chain is more than that. In supply chain, we have uh, different activities, different parties. So in the old days, what we talk about, transportations, right? We talk about uh, transportation companies. Now they change it to logistics companies. And later they change it to supply chain company. Right? Warehousing. We talk about this. In the old days, we only have this. So warehousing and transportation. These are the main concepts. And in supply chain, actually, we cover also, for example, the procurement. Procurement is also a new term. The old term is purchasing, why we buy something. Because in order to do operations, we need to buy something. We need to buy the inputs and then we do on it, right? So all these are old terms. And then supply chains gradually develop into a concept that we consider the whole operations from the very beginning until the customers, until the end. So we try to overlook or oversees the whole things to see how it works step by step. Because when we talk about supply chain, if any parties in the supply chains does not work properly, the whole things will disrupt. Right? So it's very important. So we will discuss supply chain management. So this is the overall concept about how we manage the whole activities. And then, 
after that, we will talk about from the beginning. Okay, from the beginning, before you purchase, before you buy something, what you need to know. Why you buy? You buy to sell, most likely, right? So when you buy, you need to know who you are going to sell to. And are there any customers? What you need? How much you need or how many you need, right? So how you can know this? By histories, by data, by past records. So this is how we use the past data to develop or predict the futures. So this is the meaning of forecasting. So this is the first step. Just like assuming, nowadays very common, many girls, ladies, want to operate their own IG stores, right? Very popular. What kind of products that you want to sell? How you think about this? How you decide? How many you prepare? Do you have any idea? For example, some uh, very popular, famous uh, uh, pop stars uh, souvenirs, for example. If you want to sell this in your IT store, then how many pieces you should prepare? You know, if you prepare too little, you cannot make, make big money. Right? You only sell five pieces, and most you can get maybe $500. Right? But at the same time, if you prepare too many, you have trouble because you cannot sell all of your products. So this is why the first step for you is to think about how we plan our scale by doing some statistical analysis based on the past data try to use that data to predict the futures. You, as a new starter, to operate the IT stores, you don't have your own past data. Then what you can do? You need to think about other sources, right? Other data source from the others. So all this belongs to forecastings. Once we have this concept, then we can plan our operations in terms of scale. So the next step is to think about the capacities management. You know what is capacities? The size, right? Basically it's talking about the size. So if the past data or the predictions tell you that the size is that big, then your capacities has to be this size instead of this size such that you can satisfy the demand in this scale. So this is why we need to think about how we manage our capacities. But as a new starter, we will come on. Even though you predict the market is this size, at the beginning, you may have faced to make your business like this scale. You may start with a smaller scale, right? more safe, less investment. And then once you use up all your existing capacities, then you start to think about enlarging your scale, one by one, step by step. So how we plan on these expansions, whether it's like this or two times only, right? It all depends how you choose. So this is what we are going to talk about, capacities management. Once you have the capacities, then the next step is to think about how we utilize those resources in order to achieve what you want to output, what you want to produce. Okay, because you have the resources, you need to know how you deploy the resources. So we call this aggregate planning. Just give you an example. Apple now introducing the new mobile, uh, new iPhone. What, what they call? iPhone 11? Yeah? How do you think about this? Because Apple, uh, iPhone 11, different models, different colors. 
right? How they plan to produce these different combinations. It's not a simple task, right? Whether black color or gray color is more popular than the golden color, or silver color, or the white color, right? So you need to think about this. Whether uh, more memory size, but more expensive is more popular, or small size, or smaller screens, right? All this will affect their operations. So we will think about how we deal with this. For Apple, they are not only producing the iPhone, they produce many different products, iMac, MacBooks, whatever. They need to think about how they use the resources in order to achieve all this. Not only for one single product. So you can see the capacities. It's not easy how to deal with this. So we will have a rough idea how we handle this. Okay, next one is facilities layout and plant locations. This one, as I said, you have the capacities management, right? You know how big you need to build up your capacities. So if in case your existing capacities is not enough, just like Tesla, you know Tesla? The electric car company manufacturers. They don't have enough capacities to produce enough products to sell to the customers. What they do? They ask the customers to go away, don't buy from me. No, right? What they do? They try to expand their capacities by building up a new factories elsewhere. So, in order to do this, first, you need to think about where you should build up your facilities, right? Where is the better locations? Can you give me an, 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 any suggestions that you think that location is good for Tesla? Anywhere? What in China? Yeah, this is this is the next uh, Tesla factories, right? Originally in U.S. Now they build a new factories in China. Why China? Why why Tesla chose te uh, China as the new locations for their factories? Larger market. So this is from the customer point of view, from the market point of view, right? What else? Lower production cost, right? So many factors will affect your decisions, where to locate your facilities. Now talk about the tariff, political issues. Also will affect, at the end, Tesla uh, factories in China may not open, right? They move back to the United States, maybe. Right? All this will affect your location decisions. So this is why you need to think about this. We will discuss some qualitative factors or quantitative factors, how to choose a better locations. Once you have the locations, now let's say Tesla decided to build up a factories in China, already have a specific locations, you have uh, three million uh, square meters to build up your factories. What's going to be inside this uh, three million square feet? What you put inside, different machines, right? So how you lay out your facilities in order to facilitate the operations, not only for manufacturing, assuming now you try to start up your own company, where uh, many students always want to have their own small-scale cafe, right? How to do it? How you lay out your cafe in order to be more attractive and more efficient in terms of operations? You need to think about this. Just a very simple example. In a cafe, you need to cook, right? You have a kitchen. You have dining areas for the customers. How big is your kitchen? How big is the dining area? 
you have a big kitchen, small dining area. What's the problem? You don't have enough space for customers. But if you have the big dining area of a small kitchen, what's the problem? Always keep waiting because you cannot produce enough in a short time. So all this, we need to think how we lay out. Just like uh, many, uh, uh, for example, in our own uh, student canteens, we also need to think about how we lay out different uh, uh, counters. They change, always change their layout, but I don't know what mentalities or what idea behind their changes. But if we learn how to do it, maybe we can develop a better layout for the student canteens, such that the customer move more smoothly, move much faster. Then you don't need to wait for that long, and then you don't need to come across with many different students in opposite directions. All this, we need to think about this layout. And then, next step, assuming you are already the owner of the cafe, and then you have some workers to operate this cafe for different functions. Some are cooking, some are prepared to drink, some are cleaning, whatever, right? Then how you schedule the operations of different activities such that it's more efficient, okay? So we will discuss the operations scheduling. Just like uh, very soon you will face a problem as a student, you will be given many different assignments for different courses at different due dates. How you do it? How you plan to handle these assignments at different times? So I know all of you, or most of you, will do like a dead night fighters, right? Only handle those dead nights coming. And then you handle that first. Forget about all the others. Right? So this is the dead night fighters. You see the good strategies. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Okay? So we will discuss how we handle the different activities such that by some measures it's better than the others. So operation scheduling. Same for project management is also a very big topic. We will cover the basic concepts. What we mean by project management? You, in the future, in the final year, you need to do a final year project. I believe most of you, right? You need to do it. How you schedule, how you plan the activities for these projects is not the same as scheduling of your assignments. Why? Scheduling of assignments, you do it by yourself, right? You handle your own assignments. But for the projects, you work as a team. You have four or three to four members together. How you assign these different tasks to different members. And then they can do it in sequence or in parallel at the same time, such that at the end, you combine all this work together for your final presentations and report. If you do it every uh, if you do everything in sequence, I do it first and then I pass it to you and then you do it later at the second step. And then you pass it to the third person as the first step. It takes so long. Right? At the beginning you don't have anything to do. You wait for me only. Right? It, it, it's not working like this. For cost projects, it's already have these implications. Imagine the building of the innovation tower. This big construction projects. If everyone's doing it in sequence, it takes 10 years or 20 years to build up one building, right? I do it first and then I pass it to you and then you do it later, right? It won't work like this. Even with a very good project management knowledge, all these projects are keep on delaying 
right? Same for the bridge connecting PolyU main campus to here. Supposed to be ready before the summer. At the end, you still need to walk all the way from Y core to here. Takes five or ten minutes more. Why? What about the government projects? What do you see for the government projects? Delay over budget. These are the two main problems for most of the government projects. This is the tools that we can use to manage the projects better. We need to keep on monitors the progress of the projects for all the activities and see how we should handle the remaining operations in order to compete earlier. So this is project management. And then the final topic is this quality management. Why this is the final one? Because before you deliver to your customers, you need to ensure you are producing good quality products or service. Right? You cannot say that I give it to you, you check by yourself. If it's no good, you give it back to me, and then I pay you back the money. Right? Sometimes you may not want to pay it back because you spend your money to make it. So if this is the case, then how you should handle the qualities is very important. We should think about the qualities at the beginning of the operations. That means from the input to the operations and to the outputs. So every steps, we need to think about how to manage the qualities. We will discuss some tools that uh, we can use to handle these uh, qualities. So this more or less conclude the whole lectures or whole subject. So you see how we handle from the beginning, from the demand side to the output side. So any questions about this? Yeah? No, no, no. One, uh, one of the, uh, these are not lectures, these are topics. Some of these topics last for two, even three weeks. Okay, so I will see the, the, the pace or the progress of different topics. So to, to cover at different time or different uh, weeks. Other questions? No other questions? Uh, for, for your information, uh, for my lectures, I don't like single directions lectures. I always ask questions, or I always uh, 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 welcome your questions. Okay? So you know, in order to encourage your participations and interactions, I have I have prepared this the cast list. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. I'm, I'm not going to call your name Angus Chow. Please answer my questions. Okay, I'm not going to do it like this. Okay, so, but I want you to answer my questions. You just raise your hand, you want your answers. And then I will mark your name. Okay, for every week, I will mark it. At the end of the, at the end of the subjects, I will count this as a bonus. This bonus may not make a very big difference. You can start, uh, you can uh, change your final grade from C grade to A. No, never. Okay? If you are marginal from B plus, then it may be possible that because of this bonus, you can get A. Okay? If you are uh, F, maybe may be possible that at the end you can get a D. Okay, but uh, very seldom for those F students will not answer me. Okay, so please try to participate. I, I will ask many questions, guarantee. So you will have chance if you want. Okay, but for your information, one student, one marks for one lecture. Okay, you cannot ans always answer my questions for the whole lectures, okay? Give the chance to others. Is that okay? Okay? 
So uh, we take a break and then we will start the real lecture content. Okay? Uh, we will start again at uh, according to this call, uh, 4, 5, uh, 30, 4.30, 4.30, 10 minutes.